As with my vertical stabilizer, I decided to build my rudder directly on the workbench rather than to build a jig for it. And since the rudder is quite a bit bigger than the vertical stabilizer and it's got some added angle cuts required to get the top and bottom angles uh, done correctly as shown on the print, I thought it would be a good idea to lay down some masking tape so that I can make some measurements and mark the dimensions directly on the tape and use those uh, to mark the corners of the rudder. Here's a close-up shot of the masking tape with the uh, dimensions taken directly from the print and then these crosshairs if you will with the pencil marks those basically represent the corners of the rudder. So now I can use the corner of the bench top as a reference and I come across with my uh, measuring tape and figure out these dimensions, lay down the masking tape and uh, make these pencil marks and then I can start to lay down the wood on top of this and figure out how to start cutting the various angle cuts and start building the rudder directly on top. Here is where I'm at so far with my rudder. Now a couple of things that I want to point out right off the bat. You may notice here that uh, the taper on these top and bottom edges is quite uh, quite pronounced. The reason I did that is because I'm going to incorporate my scallop trailing edge on the rudder like I did for the wings. And in order to get it to look right once the fabric is on and when you have the stringers run across here um, I wanted the fabric to be a, a smooth transition. I, I didn't want it to be lumpy with gussets and, and stuff like that. So what I did was I, I made the rudder per uh, the drawing and then I uh, tapered this all the way down to uh, a thickness that made sense for the trailing edge. In other words, when you look at the trailing edge, once it's scalloped, you don't want that trailing edge to be really, really fat. So I made it nice and thin, and then I had to taper these down to match that thinness at this end here. So this pencil line here represents where, when you look at the print, there's that one inch brace that goes across the whole width of the, or the whole length of the rudder this pencil mark represents where that piece is going to be. So from the corner here to this pencil mark, this is uh, one inch. It comes across one inch and then from from there it tapers down to this dimension here which is roughly uh, 0 0.2. It's like, point, it's like 0.195 I think or something like that but you can make it however thick you want. I just thought when the rudder's in place on the plane upright and you're looking dead on at it like this, if that scalloped, you know, the scalps would be going this way if you're looking at the rudder dead on. If that was really, really fat, I thought it would look funny. So that's why I went with, with this thinner thickness. Now what I'm doing is I'm trying to lay out the actual, uh, this is going to be the scallop trailing edge. And what I want to do is I want to make these corners so that they kind of fit onto this piece like so. So I just have this lay in here and I'm marking it up so I can cut, in effect, cut this piece out here. So this will have a good glue surface here and here and then I'll probably put some kind of blocks in here as well. But when I get to that, I'll, uh, I'll do some recording as well. Another thing I wanted to point out is uh, the way that I made my hinges. Now, as these progress further and further, I'll get into them with more and more detail, but I'm completely getting away from the standard way of doing hinges, and I'm going to use piano hinge, which is going to fit inside of this slot, and then I will bolt through the wood here and through the hinge, but I will not come out the other side this piece sits lower than this piece. There's this ledge here. So the hinge will go in here and then uh, I'll drill through the wood, through the hinge, into the wood at the other side but not come all the way out. And then this will get back filled um, 
or reinforced with plywood strips of plywood will go here and on the other side so those two bolts will be uh, captured between the p plywood pieces but these dimensions um, are roughly from the print um, well I don't know about these dimensions this is a two inch dimension here but the locations of these from any given end of the rudder are pretty much per print and obviously these have to match the, um, the vertical stabilizer as well so I did the same thing with it and uh, they have to be in the exact same location so you have to make sure when you're fitting this to the vertical fin make sure you have the, the right end of the rudder for the top and the correct end for the rudder on the bottom and then you can make sure that these these hinge locations will mate with the vertical stabilizer you also notice that I did not make a jig this rudder is just sitting on my workbench I use this corner over here as a reference point this is a 90 degree corner this corner right here is my reference point and then using pieces of tape which I have pictures of there's a piece of tape here with a dimension on it and I've got a couple pieces of tape here with dimensions as well I just lay it out that way I make my measurements and I put down a piece of tape and I draw my lines here's a better shot I draw my lines with the measurements off of the prints marking where the corners should be and I just figure it out that way and then lay it out because this is this is nice and sturdy and it's flat for the most part so I don't I didn't have to make a jig I just went ahead and laid everything out as you see here This picture is of the top and bottom pieces that make up my rudder. Now like I had done in the past, rather than uh, mill out a solid piece of wood to get me my T-shape that's required here for these pieces, I just went ahead and made uh, two separate pieces out of square stock and then epoxied them to each other to give me the T-shape. So now um, now that I have these T-shapes, I go ahead and I lay them on my bench and I get everything aligned with my marks and I have to cut the taper so that it goes from the leading edge of the rudder it tapers back to the really thin trailing edge that I'm going to use. Here is a shot from uh, looking down on them. You can obviously see the taper. Now from the right of the picture you see that they're uh, they maintain uh, that flat square shape and then the taper comes in afterwards And like I had said in the video when you look at the print you have the leading edge of the rudder and then you have that really heavy brace that runs the length of the rudder I think that is about seven inches away from the leading edge that's where the taper begins and that's what I'm trying to show here in this picture. The taper begins at that, uh, that heavy reinforcement brace. And then here is a shot of uh, one of them in place on the bench. And you can just see that from the leading edge of the rudder, it is one inch high. And then it, it comes straight back to that big heavy brace that runs the length of the rudder. And then from there, it tapers all the way down to my thin uh, trailing edge. The overall dimension for the rudder hasn't been changed. It is still the same overall dimensions as called for on the print. It's just tapered more and it's got my own modified trailing edge which that will be covered in a uh, separate DVD along with the wing trailing edge. Alright, yet another incredibly exciting still picture for you to stare at for the next few minutes. Let's see, uh, this piece here on top, the wood piece on top, is one of the tapered pieces going back to the trailing edge. I don't know if it's the top of the rudder or the bottom, but 
you can see the taper that's cut and you can make out that the piece was made from my two individual pieces of wood epoxy together and it's just laying on top of what will eventually be my trailing edge and um, at this point I just I'm just trying to figure out how to attach the trailing edge to this piece and get it cut correctly here's another shot of the same idea this is probably the opposite end of the rudder again the tapered piece coming back to the trailing edge is on top again you can see the line between the two pieces of wood where I epoxied uh, the two pieces together to make this single piece underneath is what will be the trailing edge and again I just have them laid out this way so I can try to figure out how to cut the trailing edge and get it to mate to this uh, wood piece that makes up the end of the rudder underneath both pieces is a just a piece of cap strip just to maintain some kind of uh, so the the pieces will be on the same plane because they're quite a bit thinner than some of the other rudder pieces and then an overall shot obviously on the workbench uh, the perimeter of the rudder again same overall dimensions as what's called for on the print just a modification with the trailing edge and with these uh, with these tapers the tapered pieces that make up the top and bottom you can see the masking tape underneath with uh, with my dimensions and the crosshairs penciled on them uh, the tapered piece is obviously in place and I'm just working on the trailing edge trying to figure out how to get it uh, cut correctly and get it to fit with the uh, top and bottom pieces. Fun fun. A couple of things I want to point out in this picture. First of all, on the uh, top right you can see where the tapered piece of the rudder meets the trailing edge and you can kind of see how I cut that trailing edge piece around the end of the uh, tapered piece and then of course obviously the main part of the picture that's just a scrap piece of wood and a square that I'm using to mark the lines for the locations of the stringers now the uh, end of the stringer closest to the vertical stabilizer I guess you'd call it the leading edge of the rudder that location is depicted on the print and then using the square and a piece of wood you can just transfer that same location to the back side of the um, of the stringer and mark it on the trailing edge piece and then uh, you can go ahead and put your stringers in and epoxy them so I know this isn't the most exciting picture but a couple little tidbits I wanted to add so here it is and I believe this will be the final couple of pictures for the um, for the what are we doing here we're doing the rudder yes um, as I had said before, and if you've uh, done any construction on the rudder at all, you have already know that some of the pieces, uh, as called out on the print, is uh, their different sizes. So when it comes time to put the gussets on, um, you need to either somehow sand or file or fill or do something to get the two mating pieces of wood at the same level. So. I think the easiest way to do that is to just use some um, some plywood spacers if you will I just use 16 inch plywood like you see here cut a piece to uh, go on the piece of wood that is lower than the mating piece of wood and then of course the actual gusset itself will go over the top of the uh, mating piece of wood and your filler plywood in this picture here you can see just a little piece of plywood on the left for the corner and then the longer strip piece of plywood off to the right there and then uh, the actual gusset itself will be cut to uh, encompass both adjoining pieces of wood and you epoxy it all together obviously the epoxy the uh, these plywood spacers in place and then epoxy the uh, the gusset itself right over top now sometimes you can't get them exact um, sometimes one piece of plywood is too short and two pieces of plywood ends up being too thick so uh, what I do is I I err on the little bit uh, thinner side and then just go ahead and put some heavy epoxy in there or a decent layer of epoxy and uh, clamp the gusset in place and it will kinda bend and flex around the adjoining pieces 
So here is an overall picture of the of my finished rudder. Um, the only thing that I believe is missing on this photograph are the wood block spacers that go between the stringers. I placed uh, wood blocks from uh, the span that goes from the main beam over to the right over toward the trailing edge. That longer span in between there, in between those stringers I put some blocks to help maintain the shape. But um, here it is. I believe, I believe this is just about finished other than gussets on the other side and the uh, spacer blocks. And uh, that's about it. You can kind of sort of make out the scallop trailing edge on the back. Um, I may in fact come up with another video uh, explaining the details on how to make the individual scallops for the uh, flight controls. Hey everybody. Just wanted to say real quick again, thanks for checking out my YouTube videos and uh, just a couple of real quick tidbits before you leave. If you'd be so kind as to check out my GoFundMe page, the link is down in the description of these videos. For those of you who uh, find it in your heart to uh, donate for this new cause of mine, I've got another project going on and uh, there's some really cool things I'd like to do with this aircraft um, and again that's all explained in my GoFundMe. But, um, if you find move en moved enough to go do that and donate, um, I've got this, this horizontal stabilizer skin and uh, donors will get their name put on this skin and ultimately when this gets filled and uh, the aircraft gets finished, this is going to be hung up on the wall of honor in my hangar. Just a little, uh, a little bit of recognition for those donors who helped make the project a reality. Another thing too is I'm sure you've noticed that even this video that I'm making right now is of the same or worse quality than the video that you just watched and that's because believe it or not this camera is the exact same camera that I filmed the original hint videos with. So uh, I just wanted to point that out. I'm not really sure why but uh, I know the video quality lacks but hopefully the information within is, uh, is worth something. And the other thing that I want to mention real quick is, again, these are little snippets from my Hint video DVDs, so a lot of these individual clips just kind of come to an abrupt end. Um, and that's just the way it is when I'm, I'm trying to rip these DVDs apart and, and re-edit them into small little segments, and they, they just kind of end weird at, at times. But that's it. That's all I wanted to say. And again, thanks, and I hope you'll come back, check out my channel, and uh, see if there are any new videos and updates. All right. I'll talk to you then. See you.